in this video um, or actually in this section we'll actually be talking about VPLS right so VPLS stands for virtual private LAN service VPLS is basically a L2 you know layer 2 VPN right now I want to tell you how this basically differs from the other technologies which we have been learning or which we will probably learn in future as well right so if you look at the topology here now you know we have uh, we have three sites here for the customer here we have site 1 site 2 and site 3 over here right now if you're using some technologies like say MPLS uh, you know atom right any type or any transport over MPLS or you're using something like L2 TP version 3 right so this one is basically MPLS based and this is a non MPLS based but whatever it is you know uh, you can establish the uh, you know site to site communication using these right these technologies right you can do this site 1 site 2 you know site 3 but the situation is that you will have to do it um, you know in different networks right you'll have to do it as different networks what I mean by that is like when site you want to do a connection between uh, site 1 and site 2 it will probably be in like probably the network 192.1.10.0 uh, right and this one probably is going to be 192.1.20.0 and this will be 192.1.30.0 so you get what I'm trying to say right you you will have to have multiple such networks right because they are all point to point based you know technology right so <clears throat> in all in all these technologies in, in both these technologies our our core network behaves like a big switch right and <clears throat> So you need to uh, because it's L2 VPN at the end of the day, right? But what I mean to say here is that um, you know if you're using these technologies, the point-to-point -point technologies, then you know you can you'll have to have like probably three separate networks to establish the or to achieve the same goal, right? Now that's where your VPLS differs, right? So that's where the VPLS differs. So how does it differ? Let me just show you that. Right, so if I just take a fresh snap, yeah. So in in my VPLS, right, the same can be achieved, right, by using just one network. Right, so you have you still have the same, you know, three different C's here, right, or the customer edges or the customer customer sites basically one two three, right. But in VPLS, you can kind of make it behave like this, right. So all the three guys will be connected to one single you know this this is basically like a multi-point VPN right it is no more point to point but it behaves like a multi-point you know L2 VPN so this is this is the flexibility which you get by using VPLS right so now we can have like all the three um, you know uh, networks right all the three all the three um, you know sites connected say to one single network which is 192 dot say 10.0 right this will be dot one this will be dot two this will be dot three. right so that's that's the flexibility we get out of using the VPLS kind of a setup okay great so let's actually get started right with the configuration so uh, just to recap VPLS allows the SP to connect to you know the customer you know multi-point layer to kind of a network right uh, the the capability is available on uh, I think I would say iOS XC and iOS XR routers right mainly the standard iOS you know will not support your VPLS that's why if you see at my topology here first time I'm actually using some CSR routers yeah CSR 1000V right and um, the SP core requires you know obviously the basic you know IGP and LDP configuration as the prerequisite for using VPLS right so with that information in mind let's get started so what we'll do first is we'll do the, some basic configuration right then we will do the explicit VPLS configuration okay so to do some basic configuration so this is how we are going to divide this right so we will have um, let me probably clean this up again so what we are going to do is that uh, the first step here would be um, for your for your whole VPLS uh, configuration, right? The first step would be doing uh, um, your base uh, uh, SP core configuration, right? The SP configuration. Uh, the second one would be doing the base, uh, you know, customer configuration, right? Or the CEs. 
and uh, uh, the third one will be where we'll do the VPLS configuration, right? So this is how we are going to divide. With that in mind, let's actually go to my text editor, right, where I can put in the configurations pretty quickly, um, and let's get started. So let's also probably have this side by side so that's easier for us to look at the topology. Okay, makes sense. Great. So, um, to start with, like I said, the base config, right, the base SP config, right. So, the base SP config would be basically CRS, uh, CSR1, 2, and 3, right. So, what is CSR1? What goes on CSR1? It's basically going to be uh, your, um, you know, interface config. So, we have, I'm not sure if this is visible. So, let me just increase the size probably a bit. This is better, right. Great, so on CSR1, we are going to start with the interface gig1. Let's go and do that. Uh, interface gig1, and uh, what's the IP on that? Would be what? I use the very similar uh, terminology I've been using. So it's 192.1. The link is connecting 1 and 2, so it is going to be 12.1, right? 255, the mask, 0, and the one no shut. So that's your gigabit one. We also have the other side of the interface, which is gigabit two. Let's go and do that, which is going to be one and three. Uh, let's put a loop back in case, you know, loop back would be zero and uh, the IP address, let's go with 1.1.1, right? Probably with the 255, right? Slash 32, right? Now, uh, like I said, the prerequisite also requires me to do a IGP and a MPLS over here, right? So, you will, we are basically going to have, uh, uh, we are going to have a IGP here and we are going to have a MPLS inside the code. That is the prerequisite, right? So, for the IGP, let's go with a very simple protocol, which is your router EIGRP100. The network is going to be 12 and 13, right? So, this network dot zero and we also need 13 over here and we will also need uh, to advertise the one network okay so that's your CSR one continuing with um, um, right so let's probably put this one already on my router and then we can come back and do the rest so we have CSR one here right this is my CSR one router this is how it looks Probably let's put a host name as well in case um, R1. Okay. Awesome. So let's clear the screen a bit here. Enable go for config mode. And there you go. Okay. So we have done our config on CSR1. So we'll have to replicate the same thing on my CSR2. So let me just copy this. This changes to 2. Whereas uh, the gig1 and gig2 still remains, but the IP address is going to be different, which is this is 12.2 and this is 23.2. And this is all going to change to 2, 2, 2, 2, okay. And this is 12, this remains, this is 23 and this is going to be 2, right. So now let's just take, take the whole thing and replicate it for CSR3 as well, right. The host name changes to R3. Uh, this changes to 23.3, right? I'm doing this all from the topology over here, right? Because between uh, my gig one is connected over here and it's connected between two and three, so it is 23.3. Uh, this one is going to be 13.3, and uh, the loopback is 3.3.3. .3. Make sense? Awesome, so that's good and uh, this is going to be 13.0, this is 23.0 and this is going to be 3.0. Got it. Next. Okay, so we have done with that. Uh, we also need to actually um, enable MPLS. We'll do that in the next step. So let's go and put this first. Let's go and put this on CSR2. Right, so the CSR2 is over here. Let's clean it up. And that's good. Let's also copy CSR3 meanwhile, right? So, this is my CSR3. And 
and let's put this here so we are good with that now what we'll do is the next part like i said we have to enable mpls right so for enabling mpls we go back to my csr1 and let's do uh, let's go and put mpls here which means it is mpls ldp it's router id right loop back zero that's how you do it right you put in the router id and then you need to enable the um, uh, under the particular interfaces right so we go under gig one and put mpls um, what ip right gotta do the same thing for gig two as well yeah so i can copy the same thing for csr2 right and also for csr3 because it's everywhere gig one and two right awesome so let's go and put that on my routers as well so we are already on r3 here so let's put it over here let's put it on here as well and here okay makes sense so now basically we need we will uh, we have done the whole setup on the core which means all this csr123 should be reachable to each other which we can check that right so if you go to uh, probably let's do a ping to what from uh, uh, from r1 let's do a ping to 3.3.3.3 with the source being uh, 1.1.1.1 right that works can i also ping r2 or csr2 <laughs> yep the ping to 2 also works right so basically all of them are connected now let's go and do the next step is basically doing my um, configuration the base configuration on what so i've done uh, so i've done it on the service provider next i need to do it on the uh, well, customer edges right so let's go and finish that so for base config on customer edges let's go down here which are my customer edges it's r4 we have r5 and we have r6 so these are the three guys right so on r4 let's go and do the basic stuff um, um, i think these are empty routers so we'll have to do enable conf t and uh, uh, what we'll do is no ip domain look back right um, line console zero this is a basic configs right logging sync and uh, no exact time right now we go to we're talking about r4 let me just scroll this up so on r4 i would also want to do interface which interface are we talking here ethernet 0 slash 0 right we do a no shut here right so now what i do is let me create a sub interface right because what i want to do here is that imagine if there were multiple customers right let's say now currently there is only one customer a right it could be multiple customers or multiple sites of the customers or whatever right so you would want to kind of like segregate the traffic here right now there is only one so that's why you're using one interface but what if you had multiple over here right like this so that's why what i'm going to do is i'm going to do you know sub interfaces right so that you can scale this in future as well for multiple different customers or different sites and stuff like that, right so i'm going to create a sub interface which is ethernet 0 slash 0 dot 1 that's how you create a sub interface you're going to put an encapsulation right dot 1 q that's for your sub interface 1 q uh, sorry uh, this is for your vlan my bad so once you create the sub interface encapsulation dot 1 q vlan uh, i can give any vlan id i'm going to use 100 for this one right so all the traffic which is going on that particular sub interface will have the tag of 100 now once i do a sub interface and we and i can now put the ip address which is 192.1.100.4 right and 255.0 that's good do a no shut what else let's also put a loopback interface and the ip address is going to be as usual 4.4.4 and 
dot zero right and router eigrp 100 the network is 192.1. Which network? 100.0 is what I want to address. So this EIGRP has nothing to do with the EIGRP which we did, you know, internally, right? Uh, and the, that that is completely happening inside that particular AS, right? So there is there is no, I can I can even use a different number over here, right? So this EIGRP is basically the one you know which is going to connect all the sites, right? Because at the end of the day, like I said, you know, the whole MPLS core because it's l2 vpn the whole mpls core will behave the core the sp core will behave like a huge switch right and we have three different sites here so you want to kind of like connect these three sites right so for that reason we need to have some kind of routing protocol right so this is helping you do that you'll actually understand later once we do the whole config right but for now Assume that you have a IGP or you have a you have a uh, routing protocol, but that is nothing to do with the one which we configured here as part of the IGP inside the code. Okay, and inside this um, you know routing protocol, we are basically advertising what we are advertising the the loopback. Sorry, the loopback. Maybe let's put it as 10, 10 dot four. I think that's good, right? So we are advertising the loopback, right? And we are advertising the one ninety two one. 100.0 network, the multi-point network, right, which finally I'll be using to connect, right. So that's going to be on my R4. Let's go and put this on R4 and let's see if everything is good. So we go to R4, I clear the screen a bit. Okay, I think probably host name of uh, R4 will be good. Sorry. Okay, so we have that. Um, so, okay, so we are good with um, you know R four. Let's go and do the same thing on R five. We still haven't gone to the VPLS yet. We are still doing all the base configuration which is needed, right? So this is R five and zero dot zero. This is zero dot one. What else? Uh, this network, this hundred dot five. This is going to be five 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 three five, right? and all of the rest is good let's take this that would go on my r5 yep this is good this is good yeah so there you go we are done with r5 and we have r6 so we have r6 let's 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 go and put it here r6 what are the changes? It's going to be 100.6. This changes to 6.6.6, .6 right? Rest is all good. So I take this and that goes on my R6, which is the last one. Okay. So we have done the configurations. We have done the basic configurations, right? Which we started with. We did the, we did the basic SP core. We did the basic, um, you know, C configuration. Now is the time when we will do the VPLS configuration, right? So, okay. So now, uh, let me just get rid of this. Awesome. So now um, we are doing the VPLS configuration. So how do we do this? So VPL configuration will basically be on the P routers, right? Because that's where all the magic is happening right the traffic is coming from the site 1 and site 2 site 3 into each of these P routers and now they got to do the magic so that you know the traffic gets switched to the right destination right so when say from site 1 when I'm trying to ping say site 3 right this P router should have or should do the whole magic to you know to send the route or should send the traffic to the right route right now how does that happen is what we are going to concentrate on right so let's actually start configuring and while we are configuring I'll, I'll try to explain to you guys what we are actually ending up doing right so now we are doing the vpls configuration which means we have to do this on all my csr 1 2 and 3 right so let me put it as a separate probably uh, heading over here so that you know it's separate from the base configuration this is vpls so it's csr 1 we do this on csr 2 we do this on csr 3 but what is this first we go under which interface the 
gigabit 3 interface from where the traffic is coming right so let's go inside gigabit 3 okay now let's do a no shut right now what we do here is that we create something called as a service instance right service instance you can think of like it is uh, um, I would say when you're configuring an access list right you put the access list command and you have like a sequence numbers right you have you can put access list 10 20 30 and put the different entries inside that so you can look at service instance in that way right service instance you configure service instance and you put a number right any number it's locally significant five right in this case and it's the ethernet so you go for ethernet and <coughs> now inside this we know that this is this is the interface where we are talking about and we know the traffic which is coming in right what kind of traffic is coming in we have tagged the traffic with the vlan of 100 right on all my three sites so this is where you actually connect or link your in encapsulation this is where you link your vlan traffic to the service instance so we say encapsulation dot one q what is the tag which is 100 right now the next thing is we create a bridge domain right because at the end of the day you know there is um, <coughs> there is always a possibility to have different uh, you know multiple traffic multiple vlan traffic coming in right so you don't want all of this traffic to get mixed you want it to be isolated and separate and in silos right so that's why you create a bridge bridge domain right if this number what you create here let's we can give anything like one two three and it's locally significant right so bridge domain is basically locally significant now just for your understanding imagine if we had maybe another traffic right right now we just have the traffic which traffic we have the hundred traffic coming in like this right we have the hundred uh, VLAN hundred traffic right imagine we had another flow probably with uh, you know one 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 right another traffic coming in so how would you configure this it would be pretty simple right you just take the whole three commands change the service instance to probably a different number as the sequence number so you can change it to 10 the dot one q is basically going to change to 111 right and the bridge domain would change to 120 say 124 right so now these both domains would be completely different or it helps you you know isolate or um, you know isolate the different traffic coming in right so that's the use of that so this is how you would basically take care of your multiple you know multiple uh, tagged traffic right coming in right great even if the customer say has a trunk interface it will still work because you know at the end of the day you are just looking at the traffic you know on the service provider side you are just looking at the vlan tags right so just to recap here the bridge domain is locally significant it means that it shouldn't it need not be that it has to match on the other side right and uh, yeah so but it just helps you to kind of like segregate right locally on the router it helps you kind of to segregate different flows or different tagged traffic you know which comes into your route in my case i have just uh, vlan 100 so i'm going to remove these three commands i had just put it for the explanation purpose right so now um okay the other 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 point which i also want to call out here is that we talked about how we would be able to achieve this multiple um, multiple tagged traffic coming from a single router by that i mean something like you know um, uh, let's say you had let me just get rid of this right so let's say you had another uh, site here and let's say for the same customer a right you had a same customer a and this also connected here right so we can achieve this as well but obviously you need to either have a different separate physical interface like this right you'll have to have a gigabit 3 and probably gigabit 4 here or what you could do is you could use the gigabit 3 but as a sub interface right one sub interface would cater to this site and the other sub interface would cater to the other side right now your question could be another interesting question what if what if this was right so sorry what if this was a different customer itself right imagine this was customer b and this is customer a so how would you take care of this right so that also 
excuse me yeah so in that case right again the different um, having a different physical interface or a sub interface would actually help me right because at the end of the day you know under that particular um, um, interface uh, we will will basically be you know configuring your uh, we'll be configuring your uh, vlan your service instance all of that is going to be linked to that particular interface right so this works in any of the cases you can you can now have multiple sites for the same customer you can have different customers at each of the provider edge and all of those configurations in you know, all of those setups are very much valid and you will be able to achieve those right great so um, coming back coming back let's go back just got diverted a bit let's just get rid of this to avoid confusion okay so now um, coming back to our problem we just have one site right with one kind of traffic that's tagged as 100 coming in which means we are good now the next part what is the next part the next part is um, you know um, is the configuration of the VPN ID right so let me just put the configuration so it's L2 VFI right and this is where you know the different customers are going to come in like in my case it's just customer a so i'm going to create one vfi right which is manually created let's put manual right so l2 vfi customer a if you had multiple customers this is where you would define it right now the vpn id is very important right so vpn id is is basically use it to tag right um tag tag the traffic at a global level right because bridge domain ID is very local to the router, right? But when this traffic goes from say CSR1 to CSR2, right? On the CSR2 also, you need to configure a VPN ID and they have both have to match. And only then, you know, CSR2 will realize that this traffic, you know, is destined to this particular customer, right? So, so it's very important to understand that, right? Let me actually put the configuration and then show you the packet flow, how it works, right? So, um, so once you have put the VPN ID, next is you need to go and attach your bridge domain to it. Bridge domain, what is bridge domain? In my case, 123, right? So it's all about linking, right? So you have your service instance. Service instance is basically linked to a particular, you know, VLAN, right? And that VLAN is basically part of a bridge domain, right? Kind of like a way of segregating traffic. Right, this is kind of like you can assume like a just like VLAN is an identifier for segregated traffic in VPLS you can look at at bridge domain doing the similar job. Now, like I said, bridge domain is locally significant, but you know if you want the other routers also to identify this traffic, then you have to use an, another identifier which is your VPN ID, and this is where you link the bridge domain ID to your VPN ID. Now, once you're done with this, next what you need to do is you need to explicitly tell your uh, you know your VFI that for this customer which are your two other neighbors right so on this outer we we know that the two neighbors are 2.2 and 3.3 so that's where you go and do it so you say neighbor 2.2.2 and what is the encapsulation it's going to be mpls right so take this and it's going to be 3.3 here right so you understand now if you look at the packet what happens is when the packet comes in right so let's assume that you know we are uh, where are we we are we are here right so when the packet comes in like this uh, you know uh, the packet is obviously going to have a bunch of things right it's going to have uh, uh, your your traffic tagged as 100 because that's a vlan you're going to have your source mac you're going to have your destination mac right uh, the source IP will be there, the destination IP will be there, and then you will have um, what? You'll have your data and <coughs> right, all of that, right? You have your data and all of that. Now, when CSR1 looks at this, what it will do is it, it will kind of like, you know, logically, this will not actually go on the packet. This is, I'm just putting here for logical representation. It will say, it will tag this as, bridge domain what is a bridge domain 123 because the traffic is you know coming from vlan 100 right this will not go on the packet i'm just using for representation purpose now once this is done then we know that bridge domain is actually linked to what 
the VPN ID. So this is where the VPN ID comes into picture and the VPN ID being triple one. So this is how it is. Now when this packet actually goes from where from CSR one to say CSR two, right? Obviously the bridge domain won't be there. I've just put it for representative purpose, but the VPN ID will still go. And you know the same VPN ID will be configured here as well, right? And that's how you know the CSR will understand that yes, this traffic is coming from where from customer A and for the VLAN 100, right? So you'll have different, obviously you'll have a different VPN ID for a different customer and for a particular bridge domain, right? So this is this is how the whole VPS, VPLS works because of all these various, you know, identifiers which we are using, right? Hope that was clear. Now what we'll do is let's just take this one and put it on my CSR, CSR1, where is it? Over here, right? So I go to my CSR1, let's just copy this if I have not right, so this is what I want on my CSR1 right there you go that's good now let's also configure the CSR2 right so what will be the change it's all gigabit 3 right so for CSR2 it's gigabit 3 this is good uh, Yep, the VLAN is good, 123 is good, the VPN ID is also good. It's only that this will change because it is 2, we'll have to change the neighbor to 1.1.1, as simple as that. So that would go on my CSR2. Okay, and similarly, let's go and do CSR3, the only change would be changing this to 2.2.2. that would go here right so there you go so we have actually done the whole configuration of uh, what VPLS now it might take some time to come up if you go to my R4 and uh, you know if you run say show IP as IP neighbors you see that we have actually established neighborship with my R5 and R6 Right. Similar is the case with uh, if I go to R5, you can see you have neighborship, right? Which means you would be able to ping from one side to other. Which let's say I'm on R5 and I want to ping my R4, I can do that as well. There you go. Right. I can also ping my the other side, which is uh, my R6. Right. This works. Right. So what we have achieved using VPLS is this. Right. Uh, let me just take a screenshot just to summarize what we learned right so <clears throat> we kind of uh, uh, let's say we kind of simulated a, a L2 switch over here right using the MPLS core right that's what we did uh, you know this whole uh, MPLS core which was there here we kind of converted into let's say a very simple L2 layer switch right and as a result, now we are able to connect all the three sites, right, using one single network. And the network is 192.1. Um, I think it was 4000, right? We use the 100 network. So we are able to connect it in the single network, which is 100.0s, right? Slash 24, right? Here it is dot five, here it is dot five, and here it is dot six, right? So this was possible because of a VPLS, right? And the main distinction of VPLS with the other kind of uh, uh, L2 VPNs is that it's a multi point, right? It is multi point, unlike the other, um, you know, uh, L2 VPN technologies like Atom or L2 TPv3, where uh, you know you do P2P or point to point connections, but here it's a multi point connection, right? So, this is this is actually where you know you kind of use VPLS when you have a multi point kind of a setup and you want to connect all your sites, but at the same time, you want to do it, you know, in a single network, right? Because it's a multi point. Right, so hope you guys liked it. Um, do tune in for more videos, uh, you know, in the MPLS section. Thank you.